Simons is a professor at a Tokyo University. He explains how an explosion might occur and what the worst case scenario may mean for local residents. The damage to the fuel rods in this case will not cause a fire. And again, this is a key difference between the disaster going on at the moment, though it is a disaster, and the Chernobyl incident. The, the situation is uh, the fuel rods can melt. They can become oxidized. And the rods are protected by a zirconium alloy coating. And when that comes into contact with water, the result is the production of a large amount of hydrogen, which is, of course, explosive. And that causes a, a, a large explosion, as we saw yesterday. Whether the radiation is coming from Fukushima Daiichi, reactor number one or number three, or more locally, is a, a very important question to solve. I would hazard the guess that it is coming from Fukushima Daiichi number one. Now, there are different types of radiation being released into the atmosphere. The good news is that a lot of the steam which escaped in the explosion from Daiichi reactor number one building yesterday is relatively light isotopes. These isotopes cannot really cause long-term damage to human health. The more serious problem is that they have also detected isotopes of iodine and cesium in the area around the Fukushima explosion. These are much heavier isotopes, and that means that if they get into the human body or if they get into the soil or the water supply, they can cause long-term radiation poisoning. Moscow's pledging to stand shoulder to shoulder with Tokyo during the crisis. A plane carrying Russian rescue workers is heading to Japan with another due to take off from the country's Far East on Monday.